the lies of the devil. It's an advice I've come to give you today. Because everything around us is speaking lies. The economy is speaking lies. Pandemic is speaking lies. The political situation is speaking lies. Security is speaking lies. When I say lies, does it mean they are not factual? They are factual. That's what, what we are saying. But simply put, they are lies of the devil. Joblessness is speaking lies. Husbandlessness, wifelessness is speaking lies. Childlessness is speaking lies. Are they not true? They are true. In a way. Because that's what you can see, what you can hear, and what is affecting you immediately. But they are still lies of the devil. But adventure, you have seen and heard that a lot of people have had problems. And you yourself may have had problems. And all the issues of life, too numerous for us to list. All the challenges and a huge catastrophe. But I'd like to tell you today that they are all lies. So if they are lies, what is the truth? What God says is the truth. In addition, you have seen Christians even affected by the same thing that the unbelievers are affected by. And it seems there is no difference between us and them. The believers and non-believers. And that has gotten you to set some doubts in your mind. And you start to ask questions. Don't believe the lies of the devil. Your faith may have been challenged by them. That's all right. And you are not doubting if there's a God or the God you have been worshiping is powerless. I come to church. I lift up holy hands. I worship him. Father, you have seen me. I have not committed any sin in the last two years. But I'm still going through this. That's exactly where the devil wants you to be. Where you want to start doubting God. And I'd like to challenge you today. Don't believe the lies of the devil. To what's in the case? You, are some, you, you sometimes see unbelievers prospering beyond, be, before you, and you start wondering, what are you doing as a, in this, with this Christianity self? And you start comparing yourself with them. This guy goes everywhere, doing everything, but look at him. But the Bible said the prosperity of the, of, the, of the wicked shall perish with them. You forget that scripture and you start comparing yourself with them. And you start believing the lie of the devil. Your time will soon come. And when it comes, it shall be sweet. I can testify. I searched for job for six years. When my time came, look what the Lord has done. It is time for you to know that the devil is a lying devil. It's a lying devil. All you have to see, to, all you have seen are all photo tricks. They are not real. They look real, 
but they are not. But pastor, I know that guy. He's making progress. How, 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 how is he doing it? And yet, he doesn't even believe in God. When your womb comes, you will surpass them. I am a living testimony. Taiwo here is a living testimony. No job at one time. Dream hairdressing, barbering. No hope in life. But today, a wife. And he said to me, Pastor, I look at me. I want my wife to move here, but I don't want it. It must be a better job. The wife got a job in Lagos that is paying three, four times what she used to earn over there. Sorry, we'll give your testimony later. I just say, make I give them the taste. Know this. All the things you have been going through is a lie of the devil. I just said that it's 27 years in ministry to be able to pay salaries. With no work done. It is a struggle. But today, by the grace of God, we don't struggle to pay anything. We didn't struggle to build this. Have I ever called you to let us pray that we get money so that we can have this building? We didn't call for special offering. We didn't give you envelopes to go out. We just said, God, we build it. And without a struggle, they beg anybody. We didn't even go to beg our mother church. We didn't. No, not one day. All that the pastor asked me, how's the building going? It's going very well. Hallelujah. Praise God. I mean, listen, ladies and gentlemen, stop believing the lie of the devil. What you are going through, you know what David said? He said, do I pass through the valley of the shadow of death? He didn't say, do I stay in the valley of the shadow of death? Whatever you are going through, you are passing through. Know that very well. It is not permanent. The situation you are, you are in is not permanent. You are just passing through. Somebody say, I understand that, Pastor. <laughs> Satan does not have power. The power attributed to him. We sometimes attribute these powers to Satan. I have asked many people say, Eshu Lagbara Kolikba that Zilla has power, he doesn't have salvation. He has no power, he has no salvation. He has lost both. It's a lie of the devil to say Satan has power. For I read in my Bible, Matthew 28:18, all and Jesus said, came and spake unto them, saying, All power. How many is left? Did he leave some behind? He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Nothing is left for Satan. So why do you attribute some power to him? In the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 22, he said, all things are delivered unto me by my father. There's nothing that is left. All things in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 35, it says, The Father loved the Son and has given him how many things? All things. And ladies and gentlemen, 
When God demonstrated the power by raising Lazarus after four days, after four days, well, it's normal. Isn't it normal? It's normal. Come before the grave, remove the remove the the stone, Lazarus come forth, the man who was tied down started to jump. And ladies and gentlemen, that thing, that thing speaks a lot of message to me. Because many of us don't want to do anything to get the miracles. But even Laz dead Lazarus, when he got life back, had to do something, walk by himself out of the grave. But the one that touched me is that the man who is raising the dead is the one that is now dead. And the Bible says in Ephesians 1.20 God demonstrated the power if you read from verse 21 which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right hand in heavenly places. The power went into the grave of Jesus Christ while Jesus has gone to hell to preach the gospel and resurrected him back to life and he showed himself 40 days. There's something about 40. Moses fasted for the first 40 days. He fasted for the second 40 days. Elijah fasted for 40 days. Jesus fasted for 40 days. And ladies and gentlemen, Jesus showed himself to his disciples for 40 days. So that same power came into him. I, I'm trying to explain to you that there is no power left for Satan. Hebrews 2, 8 says, Thou hast put all things in subjection under him. In subjection under him. And you left nothing that is not put under him. Stop attributing any form of power to say that. Those things you are seeing that are happening today in the world are photo tricks if they are not in alignment with the word of God. Because the word of God says, thou shall have good success. The word of God says, thou shall be the head and not the tail, above all and not beneath. Anything that is not speaking that is not of God. The word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus, you have been made whole. Anything that is not speaking that is not of God. The word of God says, it is not man. It is not good for a man to be alone. Why man? Because man was the one that was there at that scene, that time. Now, if a woman was the one that was there, God will say, it is not good that a woman should be alone. So you can use it for both gender. Forget this stupid gender fluidity. God did not create any other gender but male and female. And the Bible says it. Because you are uncomfortable with your body, you not start to think that you are a man and you are a woman. It's wrong. We are going to address that one day too. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that, in that he put all things under in subjection under his feet, he left nothing that is not put under him. It is clear that Satan has been totally limited. No power. If you know this, you will then realize that everything you put in opposition to the word and counsel of God is a lie from the pit of hell. Everything in opposition in your life to the word and the counsel of God is a lie from the feet of hell. If you did not create the situation, you will overcome it. Listen to me. If you didn't create the situation, you will overcome it. 
Even if you created the situation and you recognize that I created this and you repent of your doing, you will overcome. But Satan will not want you to believe that. He wants you to believe his lies because he's full of lies. Jesus said it, John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil he was taking, talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, uh, and the loss of your father you will do. Who is their father? The devil. What does he do? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. He doesn't live in the truth. He doesn't like the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks lies, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Satan's language is lies. He makes them seem real so that the average Christian will say, ha. Ah. And today, I thank God for the Lighthouse Choir. Today, many song, Christian songs are actually elevating Satan indirectly. But our own Lighthouse Choir seems to Elevate Jesus. Hallelujah. That is what he uses lies to get his way with the Christian. Let me also remind you what Jonas, what, what uh, was written in the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 2, verse 8. They that observe lying vanities. So all the things we are seeing, I am saying they are all lying vanities. If somebody told you five years ago that we build a gigantic building like that, like this, would you, be, would you have believed the person? If you are in this church, would you have believed the person? Even after we announced that the building will be built and the church just went by half. Half of the church members are not coming again. For me, that's a lying, that's lying vanity. You will be discouraged. You say, ah, what is happening to me here? How is this thing happening? Hey, I just announced oh, Mrs. Badejo, Reverend Mrs. Badejo told me when she came to our house of blessed memory. She came to our house and said, uh, the church, I said, we were building a building. She said, ah, when you announce what happened in the church, everybody disappeared. I said, not everybody. Some people. Lying vanities. Lying vanities will say, if you give your money as tithe, you will suffer. Who will make you suffer? I've been doing this for how many years now? I've never suffered. I've never laughed. And the more I give, the more he gives to me. Are you hearing me? The more I give, the more he gives to me. I'm a living testimony of that. If tomorrow God says, rise and build a bigger one than this, I will rise and I will build it. Where is he going to get the money for? You see, we have come to believe lying vanities. And that makes us to forsake our own mercy. We pray for mercy this morning from Psalm 51 verse 8. But we forsake that mercy by ourselves. Even when your miracle is on the way, Satan puts a stall, tries to block you and make you see only the problem. Make you see only the problem. Look at the children of Israel. When they were miraculously, miraculously delivered from the Egyptian's hand, they left Egypt, but Satan didn't give up. 
you follow them. Let me first start by showing you that God will take us through longer routes in order for us to arrive safely. But that does not mean he's unmindful of timing. God is not unmindful of timing. Oh, I am 10 years old. I was, I was 20 years old. 30 years old. I had no job. 33 years old, I got a job. 30 years, I couldn't buy the spoke of a bicycle. God is not a matter of timing. He has the right timing for you. He has the right timing. Look at what he did to the children of Israel. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. He said, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the land of the Philistines, although that was near. That was near. Clearly stated, that was near. Why are you, that's why today we say it, you go on Israelite's journey. You know we say it a lot. Yeah? That was there, but God is not allowing them to go that way. Let's paradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. So, in all this, he was actually protecting them. What God is taking you through, ladies and gentlemen, he's protecting you. What he took me through all the years is protecting you. When I look back, as I left the university and got a job, Ladies and gentlemen, you may never have known me because I will be so radical, so sinful, so this thing, I may have lost my life. But those six years, he was busy guiding and protecting me. And those six years became a training ground for me to take my job very seriously when I got it. Any wonder why I was one of the best, if not the best, in DPR in my time. Now, Pharaoh will come back to, uh, to, to pursue. He doesn't, Satan does not give up. You know, even with Jesus, after the three first temptation, second one, third one, the Bible says he left him for a season. Many of us don't realize it, that in the, during the crucifixion time, it was still Satan that it was at work. For my Bible says, had they known, they didn't know that the, his crucifixion would be their demise, their end, their annihilation. They didn't know that. So they, they, they were pursuing, let's even kill this man. He's delivering too many people. And the Bible says that they know they will not have crucified the God of glory. Exodus 14, I read from verse 5, and I will just jump because I have a few minutes left. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. He was the one that released them. And the heart of Pharaoh was, and of his servants were turned against the people, against the people they released now. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Every time I make an altar call, I speak to the people. If I have the opportunity privately and I tell them, know this, this is the time Satan will want to attack you in every way. You are a smoker. You want to leave smoking because you gave your life to Jesus Christ. As you are leaving the church, the first person you will see will be holding cigarettes. And the wind will blow it to your direction. And when you blow it to your direction, what happens? You say, okay, let me take this last one. That's how he does it. That's how he does it. But when you hold your ground and say, mm -mm, you see, we go. That doesn't mean he has gone permanently. He will still come back. Because Satan is a better evangelist than most Christians. 
is always working every day to take people to. And that's why all this catastrophe that annihilate people, uh, kidnapping, banditry, killing everywhere. He's trying as much as possible to take as many as he can uh, before they can repent of uh, repent um, and uh, and come into Jesus. So Pharaoh made up ready his chariot and took his people with him. And verse 7, and when he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over them, every one of them, when he has done this, In verse 9, but the Egyptian pursued after Israel. He pursued. His horsemen, his army, and overtook them, encamping by the sea. And listen to verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Is that not our situation? It is when we have trouble that we cry unto the Lord. But we are not like that in the city of Light Church. That's why we pray every time. So we pray so that we cannot become a prey. That's why we are always calling you for prayers. Every single time. And they said unto Moses, because there are no graves in Egypt, you know, powers, you know, wilderness, there are, are there no graves in Egypt where we could have been buried? And that's how taking us to die in the wilderness. Blasphemy often results from attack that Christians go through. Blasphemies. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Promotion, promotion comes from trials. Testament is a reward of tests. Triumph is a definite outcome of every trial. But when the trial comes, blasphemy rear its head. Let's look at verse 12. It says, is not this the word that we tell you in Egypt? We have been telling you this verse alone. Now, in the wilderness, you want them to come and kill us. For it has been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Can you imagine? First miracle, turning uh, rod to snake. Second miracle, turning hand into bosom. Third miracle, flies. Fourth miracle, Locust, the fifth miracle, water into blood, and all the ten of them, including the firstborn, died. And that time, they saw the hand of God. These same people are the ones now saying it is better for us to have died in Egypt, to be in slavery. That is what many of us say. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, today is the day that you should give your life to Him. You shouldn't have died in your Egypt. You should come out of your Egypt. You should give your life to him. Listen to me. But Moses had the sure word of God on which we should stand, uh, on which we should stand as Christians. We always have the sure word of God, just like Moses. Moses said unto them, Fear ye not. Stand still and seal the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians who have sinned today, you shall do them no more. I stand here as the oracle of God and I pray this prayer for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Egyptians you have seen, the failures you have seen, the lacks you have seen, the sickness you have seen, the, the things that are negative in your life that you have seen, after this service, you shall see them no more. You online, you shall see them no more. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated in the Holy Ghost. 
He said in verse 14, but the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. But that is, that is the Old Testament. In the New, it is no longer he shall fight for you. He has already fought for you and defeated. That's why he said on the cross, it is finished. Your poverty is finished. Your lack is finished. Your sickness is finished. Your lack of husband, lack of wife is finished. Your lack of finances is finished. In the name of Jesus. Everything that is lacking in your life is finished. In the name of Jesus. Your fear is finished. In Jesus' mighty name. And the Lord said unto Moses, Where do they, why are they crying to me? It is not necessary for them to cry unto me. Speak to the children of Israel. Go forward. Your crying, your fear, your trembling won't change the situation at all. God does not respond to the cry of the saints. He responds to the faith of the saints. Now you may know the Bible and say, but I, but I, I, I Isaiah, Isaiah 30, is it uh, Jeremiah 33, 3? He said, call upon me. It is call, he said, not cry. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Call upon me, not cry to me. God does not respond to cries. Even when you are knocking yourself on the ground, you are, you are, you are shouting, you are, you are tearing yourself. He doesn't respond to you. He responds to your call. Your positive. When you do this, you are only believing in the light of the devil. Your positive action and faith in the word of God can and will definitely turn things around for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. In verse 18, the Bible says, And the Egyptians shall, you, you shall know that I am the Lord. Let me stop here and tell you clearly that God is going to demonstrate his power in your life such that unbelievers will see it and they will know that your God is the true living God. If you believe that, shout a bigger amen. amen. He said, when I have gotten me honor, he's not doing it for your own honor, he's doing it for his own honor. Listen, I tell God, many of the time I say, this is not for me, this is about you. If you fail to do it, it's the you that they will be laughing at. And I go to my rest. Enter my rest, absolutely. Waiting for the time he's going to answer. When I have done my part, the Bible says, having done all, stand. Having done all, stand. That's all I need to do. Hallelujah. We know the story, the Jesus pursued the the um, the sea took them away. The rod of the rod is the word of God. What do you stretch over your some challenges? The rod is the word of God. That is what Moses stretched to part the sea. That is what he stretched to make the sea to come together again. What do you stretch over your challenges? Isaiah 11 1 says, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And we know that this refers to Jesus. And the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In John chapter 1, verse 1. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the raw word of God, and that's why whatever you ask in his name, he will do it. Stop believing the lies of the devil. The devil has no power over you. He has lost every power he has since the day that Jesus said it is finished. 
Isaiah chapter 11 verse 4 says, but the righteousness shall, de, shall, de, shall he judge the poor and reprove difficulty for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, the word of God again, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay there. This rod is Jesus Christ, the stem of Jesse, the branch of Jesse. Jesse. When Satan lies to you, he wants to destroy, to destroy, as we have stated in John chapter 8, verse 44. He comes to lie in order to destroy, to kill, to destroy. But Jesus has come to give 